Germany, like many other European nations, had a long history of colonialism and exploitation in Africa. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Germany established colonies on the continent, including German East Africa and German Southwest Africa. And while Germany never had a significant black population, it was involved in the transatlantic slave trade and the exploitation of African people. The German colonizers were involved in the oppression and exploitation of the local populations. Forced labor and violence were common, and the Herero and Namaqua genocide in German Southwest Africa resulted in the deaths of tens of thousands of people. This is a story of discrimination and persecution, the likes of which you've probably never heard of. Today we want to shine a light on the story of the Afro-German people. The story of Afro-Germans is deeply rooted in the history of slavery and colonization in Africa. During the 18th century, Africans were brought to Germany as slaves from the western coast of Africa, where a number of German estates were established, primarily on the Gold Coast. But there were also exceptions to this tragic history. Anton Wilhelm Almo, a Ghana-born man, was sponsored by a German duke to become the first African to attend a European university during the 1720s. After completing his studies, he taught and wrote in philosophy. Today, Afro-Germans are citizens or residents of Germany who are of sub-Saharan African descent. With the cities of Hamburg and Frankfurt once being centers of occupation forces following World War II and more recent immigration, they have substantial Afro-German communities. But with modern trade and migration, other cities like Berlin, Munich, and Cologne are also seeing an increasing number of Afro-Germans. As of 2020, it is estimated that there are 1 million Afro-Germans living in Germany, which has a total population of over 80 million people. This shows the growing diversity of Germany and how it continues to evolve over time. The history of Germany's relationship with Africa is complex and deeply intertwined with the legacy of colonialism. At the 1884 Berlin-Congo Conference, European powers, including Germany, divided Africa into areas of influence which they would control. Germany established colonies in the African Great Lakes region and West Africa, which led to the migration of numerous Africans to Germany for the first time. Germany appointed indigenous specialists for the colonial administration and economy, and many young Africans went to Germany to be educated. Some received higher education at German schools and universities, but the majority were trained at mission training and colonial training centers as officers or domestic mission teachers. Africans frequently served as interpreters for African languages at German Africa research centers and with the colonial administration. The legacy of Germany's colonial past can still be seen in the Afrikanisches Viertel in Berlin with streets and squares named after countries and locations tied to the German colonial empire. Today, it is home to a substantial portion of Berlin's residents of African heritage. However, the relationship between Germans and Africans in the colonies was not always positive. Interracial couples were subjected to strong pressure in a campaign against miscegenation, which included invalidating marriages, declaring mixed-race children illegitimate, and stripping them of German citizenship. The German colonial administration was also responsible for horrific acts of violence, as seen in the extermination of the Nama people in 1907. The German director for colonial affairs, Bernhard Dernberg, even stated that some native tribes, just like some animals, must be destroyed. The situation for African colonials in Germany changed during World War I, when Belgium, Britain, and France took control of Germany's colonies in Africa. The Africans who possessed a colonial German identification card were entitled to treatment as members of the former protectorates. After the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, Africans were encouraged to become citizens of their respective mandate countries, but many preferred to stay where they were. They continued to request German help and support through petitions and publications, such as the bilingual periodical Alolombe Ya Cameroon. Unfortunately, the situation for Afro-Germans worsened during the Nazi period. Naturalized Afro-Germans lost their passports, and working conditions and travel were made extremely difficult for Afro-German professionals in the entertainment industry. Afro-Germans were socially isolated and forbidden from having sexual relations and marriages with Aryans by the Nuremberg Laws. 
The discrimination directed at Afro-Germans continued with the so-called Rhineland Bastards, where Nazi officials subjected some 500 Afro-German children to forced sterilization. They were considered enemies of the race-based state, along with Jews and Roma. The Nazis sought to rid the German state of Jews and Romani through deportation and extermination, while Afro-Germans were to be segregated and eventually exterminated through compulsory sterilization. Despite these difficult circumstances, some Afro-Germans survived and later wrote about their experiences. In 1999, Hans Masakoy published Destined to Witness about his life in Germany under Nazi rule. In 2013, Theodor Wanja Michael published his autobiography, Deutsch Sein und Schwarz Dazu, and was also the main witness in the documentary film pages in the Factory of Dreams. The end of World War II brought Allied occupation forces into Germany, including soldiers of African-American, Afro-Caribbean, or African descent. Some of these soldiers fathered children with ethnic German women, resulting in the birth of around 8,000 biracial Afro-German children immediately after the war. However, the American, British, and French forces generally maintained non-fraternization rules and discouraged civilian soldier marriages. Most single ethnic German mothers kept their brown babies, but thousands were adopted by American families and grew up in the United States without knowledge of their full ancestry. The United States kept more than 100,000 soldiers stationed in Germany until the end of the Cold War. Many of these soldiers established their lives in Germany and founded families with ethnic German wives and children. However, the federal government of West Germany pursued a policy of isolating or removing from Germany those children that it described as mixed-race Negro children. Otter Lord, a black American writer and activist, spent the years from 1984 to 1992 teaching at the Free University of Berlin. During her time in Germany, she helped push the coining of the term Afro-German into a movement that addressed the intersectionality of race, gender, and sexual orientation. She encouraged black German women, such as May Ayim and Aika Hoto Marshall, to write and publish poems and autobiographies as a means of gaining visibility. Lord pursued intersectional global feminism and acted as an advocate for that movement in Germany. Her work helped pave the way for a new generation of Afro-German activists who continue to fight against racism, discrimination, and marginalization. Afro-Germans faced significant challenges in their fight against racism and discrimination. One of the major challenges was the lack of recognition and visibility of their experiences in German society. For a long time, the dominant narrative of German history ignored or downplayed the existence and contributions of Afro-Germans. Another challenge was the persistence of racial stereotypes and prejudices in German society. Afro-Germans were often subjected to racist slurs, discrimination in employment, housing and education, and police harassment. They also faced difficulties in accessing resources and services, and were often excluded from mainstream cultural and social events. In addition, the legal and political systems in Germany were often slow to respond to the needs and demands of Afro-Germans. Many laws and policies perpetuated racial inequalities and discrimination, and it took significant activism and advocacy to bring about change. In recent years, there have been several efforts in Germany to address systemic racism and discrimination in society. Some of these efforts include the creation of the German Federal Anti-Discrimination Agency, which provides support and advice to individuals who experience discrimination based on their ethnicity, religion, gender, or other characteristics. The establishment of diversity and anti-racism training programs for police officers, teachers, and other professionals who work with diverse populations. These programs aim to raise awareness of unconscious biases and promote more inclusive practices. The implementation of affirmative action policies in hiring and education to increase representation of marginalized groups, including Afro-Germans. The recognition of Afro-German history and culture through the establishment of museums and cultural centers that showcase the experiences and contributions of Afro-Germans. The integration of Afro-German perspectives and experiences into school curricula to promote a more inclusive and representative education system. 
The formation of advocacy groups and coalitions that work to raise awareness of and address systemic racism and discrimination in society. While there is still a long way to go in addressing systemic racism and discrimination in Germany, these efforts represent important steps towards creating a more inclusive and equitable society for all. While progress has been made, there is still much work to be done in addressing systemic racism and discrimination in German society. However, some of the outcomes of recent efforts include greater awareness of the experiences and contributions of marginalized groups, including Afro-Germans, in German history and culture, improved access to support and resources for individuals who experience discrimination based on their ethnicity, religion, gender, or other characteristics, increased representation of marginalized groups in hiring and education, including affirmative action policies that aim to address historical inequalities, greater understanding of unconscious biases and more inclusive practices among professionals who work with diverse populations, such as police officers and teachers, the formation of advocacy groups and coalitions that work to raise awareness of and address systemic racism and discrimination in society. These outcomes represent important steps towards creating a more equitable and inclusive society in Germany. However, ongoing efforts are needed to ensure that these gains are sustained and expanded upon, and that all individuals are able to fully participate in and benefit from German society. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and also don't forget to subscribe, as this helps our channel reach wider audiences. Thanks and see you in the next video.